Good morning and welcome to lesson 18 in our study of the book of Romans. Today we're going to do chapter 6 verses 8 to 14 but I want to start by reading a little bit just before that starting at verse 6 and I'll read the section that we're going to study. So it says starting in chapter uh, verse 6 for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin for he who has died has been freed from sin now if we died with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not, you are not under law, but under grace. This to a degree seems a bit redundant because Paul has been preaching this all along. But it really isn't, because it's most important. It's actually the basis of the entire Christian faith. For we believe that there is a God who loves us, who cares for us, and who's concerned about us. But that we, as individuals, have all gone astray. None of us are the, live up to the expectations of what God wants. We have all fallen short of God's desires and his expectations, in, essence, in essence, we have all sinned. And sin is in the nature of man. Since Adam sinned in the very first, we all have the nature of sin in us. And it's not, it's not un, uh, unreasonable and it's not hard to see how we go astray each day from what God's expectations are. We all do it. So, the penalty of sin, according to the Bible, is death. If we cannot live up to God's expectations, then we will die. We all know we're going to die physically, but we also will die spiritually. And this is the basis of the idea of reconciliation with God. God therefore sent his son to take our sins upon himself and to die in our place, to take our punishment. This is God's mercy. He has allowed Christ, who actually is a manifestation of himself, he has died in our place to satisfy his justice of holiness. This is his mercy. And by accepting that fact, by believing that fact, by accepting what Christ did for us, we have been justified, made right with God. This is the basis, the first part of the faith. This is what he says, because our old man, our former self, our former being, our former type of living was crucified with him, meaning that he went through a long period of agony on the cross. Sometimes people go through a long period of agony giving up their old selves, giving up their old habits, their old beliefs, their old ways of living. It's not sometimes a quick, easy thing. Sometimes it takes some time and it can be hurt. So we have been crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that our old person, our old persona, might be no more. That we should no longer be slaves of sin, 
For he who has died has been freed from sin. A body, a person who has died, can actually sin no more. The body is dead. It can't do anything to sin. So therefore, if we have no longer be slaves of sin, if we have accepted Christ, he has taken our sin upon himself. We have therefore, our old bodies have been in a sense crucified with him, or done away with because we have placed those sins upon Christ. And he has died in our place. This is the mercy of God. He who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. This is the second part of the Christian belief. Because Christ was crucified, was dead and buried. And we believe that he rose again from the dead on the third day. Now there have been many people who have objected to this. Many people who say he actually did not die on the cross. That someone else took his place that he only fainted, that it was all a hoax. But the evidence is overwhelming that he did die, in fact, on the cross. Forensic pathologists have looked at the evidence presented in the Bible and otherwise, and they said it's very unlikely, very unusual, that he even would have lived to be crucified, much less survive both his beatings beforehand and the crucifixion. All his disciples except one were murdered, believing that he rose from the dead and that they would go to be with him. All of them had undying faith after they saw him, after his resurrection. I mean, the evidence is certainly there. There is as much evidence or more evidence for this fact than for almost any other event in ancient history. So we believe that Christ rose from the dead, that he therefore lives, and that we therefore, if we follow him, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Because we know, this is a fact, we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, once he died and was raised from the dead, he no longer dies. He dies no more. And therefore, if we do, do we believe that if death no longer has dominion over him, he no longer has dominion over us. The death that he died, the death that Christ died, he died once for all. He died to sin once for all. It's an event which will never be repeated. It's only once that he died. It's only once that he was resurrected. He's going to live then forever. He died it for the sins of all. As, as John said when he saw Christ coming towards him at the time of his baptism, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the sins of all. All we have to do is accept what he's done and our sins can be forgiven. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no one on earth who never sins anymore. We, we do it every day. None of us live up to God's expectations. So we do it every day. The difference is that sin no longer has the control over us that it does over some other people. The desire to sin, the desire to do certain things that used to be there before are no longer there. The desire to make sins or to do things which are knowingly wrong is gone. Some people say there's no fun in being a Christian. There's no joy in being a Christian because all the fun things are done away with. Well, that's just the exact opposite. There's more joy in being a Christian and actually a lot of fun in being a Christian because the good things are still there. The things that may destroy you are gone, but the things that really empower you are there. 
For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives now to God. So the idea is now that we have been justified by accepting Christ, by accepting what he did for us. We have been justified in that our sins have been forgiven, our past has been wiped out, our past slate has been wiped clean. Now he says that we live to God. Now becomes the process of becoming more holy, more like Jesus, or more towards what's called sanctification. It is said that you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What that really refers to is the fact that once you are saved, you work towards sanctification. You work, you work towards the way you should be. And you understand that there's some, and, uh, some degree of, of uh, fear in this, some degree in the fact that you're not going to do things the right way that you are going to keep sinning, but your sins have been forgiven, not by anything you do, not by anything you can do, but purely by the grace of God. The mercy of God was that he took, he allowed Jesus to take our place on the place uh, in death. He died for us, that was God's mercy. God's grace is that he gave us a chance to have everlasting life with him. So it says that you live to God Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't let it have control over you, that you should obey it in its lusts. Don't let the mortal body, the desires that are not right, the desires of your body, have sway over you. Now, it doesn't mean you can't, you, you can't work towards having nice things, you can't work towards having a good future here on earth, you can't work towards having some pleasurable things, but it means that they don't have control over you. You don't let those things that you may want control your body in the place of Christ. Christ should control your body. He should be your first, your, your, your first consideration even over your family. But once that is true, it says to seek first the kingdom of God. Once you accept Christ first and work towards him, everything else will come into, will come into line. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. This means your members of your body, your members of your off your, your arms, your feet, your eyes, your ears. Don't hear things that you don't want them, that they shouldn't necessarily hear. Don't listen to things that are, that, are, that are not right. Don't watch things that are not right. Don't do things which are not right. Don't let sin become control your members as instruments of unrighteousness to God, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, now alive forevermore in Christ and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Because sin no longer controls you. Sin no longer has control over you. Sin should actually be very small. It is something you have control over sin. Sin is not under control over you because you are not under the law, but under grace. You are not under the law of, law of the Ten Commandments, of any other legalistic system. You are now under the grace of God. There are many things, many aspects to this, which are, are involved in this. It can become a very complicated and very difficult uh, study in many ways. But to make it perfectly sort of Simple, I guess, if you want to use that word. The idea is Christ died for us. He took our sins upon him. If we accept that, if we transfer our sins to him and accept the fact that he took our sins, then we die essentially with him. And if we truly do that, then you'll want to live with him in the form of his resurrection, live to God in righteousness. This is really what this is referring to overall. 
Sin no longer should have a control over you. Sin should no longer have a desire to control your body. You should have a control over sin. Doesn't mean you'll never do it. We all sin, but it's not in a control situation. We are not under the law. We are no longer under the legalistic system which points out our sin as a form of punishment. We are now under a system which points out sin as a means of not being righteous with God and not fulfilling the aspects and the considerations and the desires of what God wants for us. So we now control what we do more than having what the sinful nature, our own sinful nature, control us. And this is really what Paul is saying here. Don't let sin control yourself. If you have died to Christ, then you also have been raised with him in the resurrection in a new life. Your old self should be done away with. Your new life should be there, bringing you towards more righteousness with God. And this gives you the eternal life that God has promised to all those who believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus for our sins. He died once for sins, just once, never again. He died for all sins, and as a result, all people who believe and accept that, truly accept that, have access to eternal life. This is the main basic point of Christianity. It's the main basic point of Romans. It's the main basic point of the whole Bible. Believe in Christ. Believe in his birth, in his death, and his resurrection, for which there is more evidence actually in history than for any other event of ancient times. Believe in that. Truly believe in that. And you will live with Christ. As it says, you're alive to Christ. You're alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ died once. He dies no more. He lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the basis of this part of Romans. And that's sufficient for today. We're going to continue and finish chapter 6 next week. So thanks again for watching. I hope this has been of some help to you. Bye for now.